Some feel the 1980s were a decade of decadence and excess, and many agree that the rampant soda consumption of the time is a perfect example. In that decade, the 7-Eleven Big Gulp doubled in size from 32 ounces to 64 ounces. 48% of all Americans were drinking at least one soda a day. And two companies battled for supremacy in the soft drink market. Grab a cold can and pop the top, because this is the history of the Cola Wars. The 1980s saw many big battles in the retail and entertainment markets. He-Man vs. Skeletor, Rocky vs. Ivan Drago, and Coke vs. Pepsi. Of all these matchups, none had higher stakes than the war between the two sodas. This war began because of two pharmacists. Coca-Cola got its start in Georgia in 1886 when a pharmacist named John Stiff Pemberton invented the carbonated tonic as a medicine and sold it throughout fountain outlets and drugstores. An Atlanta pharmacist bought the recipe and started the Coca-Cola company in 1892. Caleb Bradham, another pharmacist living in North Carolina, concocted his own soda creation and named it Brad's Drink in 1893. That name didn't last long, for in 1898 it was rebranded as Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi would go bankrupt in 1923, but be brought back up and revived as an alternative to Coca-Cola. During the Great Depression, its nickel price cemented Pepsi as a mainstay in the soft drink industry. On the other hand, Coca-Cola would remain king for decades because of its popularity and because of its clever marketing. In the 1930s, Coke unveiled its Santa Claus campaign, giving the world a modernized version of jolly old St. Nicholas, while cleverly increasing the drink's appeal beyond the warm summer months. Pepsi would always be the second most favorite choice, but the 1970s saw the introduction of the Pepsi Challenge. This ad campaign included a blind taste test where people were offered two sodas. Naturally, people chose the Pepsi Cola. For the real difference between the world's two leading soft drinks, we are implementing a fail-safe scientific anthropological study. Chimp A will be allowed nothing but Coca-Cola. Chimp B will be allowed nothing but Pepsi. The results are astounding. The chimp that drank Coca-Cola showed remarkable improvement in motor skills. The chimp that drank Pepsi, however, quickly lost interest and disappeared. Hello? It's him! <laughs> The 1980s continued to see competition between the two rivals ramp up like never before. Coke introduced Diet Coke in 1982 and Caffeine-Free Coke in 1983. In a move to reduce costs, Coke then switched its formula from sugar to corn syrup. The change in taste drove away many Coke drinkers. Pepsi also suffered a setback when pop star Michael Jackson received burns while filming a commercial for the soda. Pyrotechnics caught his hair and jacket on fire during a take for a campaign that paid Jackson $5 million. Rumor has it that Jackson did not like the soda, and in lieu of a lawsuit, the King of Pop asked the Soda Pop Company to start a burn ward with his earnings. In 1985, Coke declared that they were completely revamping its formula to become New Coke, offering a sweeter taste to compete with Pepsi. Even though Coke would go into space aboard the shuttle Challenger, the new flavor would not be a hit with drinkers. Pepsi took advantage of Coke's misstep and started their The Choice of a New Generation campaign at that time. of a new generation. 
only three months after putting new Coke out on the market, Coca-Cola released the news that they were bringing back Classic Coke. While this may seem like a massive flop, the reintroduction of Classic Coke brought many drinkers back to the soda. The soft drink company posted record sales. Pepsi would survive the soda wars of the 80s and enter the 90s trying gimmicks such as Crystal Pepsi, only to fail. With a loyal stable of drinkers, Pepsi survives because of its parent company, PepsiCo, which also owns brands such as Frito-Lay, Tropicana, Quaker Oats, and Gatorade. Although Crystal Pepsi would see a revival in 2016 thanks to a massive internet campaign by fans, a plethora of flavors from both Coke and Pepsi have come and gone over the years. Some developed a cult following like Crystal Pepsi, while others were just flat out bizarre or unappealing. For example, in 1989, Pepsi designed a soft drink called Pepsi AM, which was marketed to be a morning beverage with breakfast. Pepsi boasted that it featured 28% more caffeine than regular Pepsi. However, the product was discontinued to low sales in 1990. While Pepsi AM seemed like an unappealing concept, the flavor was very much the same as a normal Pepsi. On the contrary, in 2009, Coke released Coca-Cola Green Tea in Japan, which was described by some as tasting like wastewater. In conjunction with this product, Coke also released Coca-Cola Light Plus, which was infused with vitamins and antioxidants. In essence, this was an attempt at a healthy soda. The FDA told Coca-Cola they weren't allowed to call it Plus because it's a snack food, and they hadn't even added enough vitamins to qualify as an official Plus food. Despite countless attempts at one-upping each other in the flavor department, the numbers reveal that Coca-Cola remains the undisputed champ in the world but more health-conscious choices have hindered its market share. Coke products are sold in over 200 countries worldwide, with consumers drinking more than 1.8 billion beverage servings each day. Coca-Cola ranked number 87 in the 2018 Fortune 500 list of the largest United States corporations by total revenue. Wow, blueberry pie and Pepsi. Uh, Good song. Great song. You can make mountains. Working late on the holidays. Yeah, it's hard on the kids. So whether you reach for a Coke or a Pepsi, when you play Dungeons and & Dragons and listen to Cyndi Lauper as you watch the A-Team after playing Atari, know that both brands fought a nasty war for supremacy and both survived with their bottle caps intact.